Welcome. You have entered the realm of 1111 Talk Radio. Your host is Simron. It's time to discover your own language with the universe. Empower yourself. Broaden your mind. Open your heart and discover who you are. Now, here's your host, Simron. I hope you are waking up to a grand and beautiful sunshiny day filled with love in your heart and joy in your spirit. That was quite a full moon that we just crossed over. And the eclipse season is on us, which means there's lots of changes, lots of shifts that are going on within everybody on such deep levels. It's an opportunity to let go, truly let go and focus in on the soul and the spirit to allow the heart to speak, to open to the higher mind, and to embody the sacred architecture that you are. As we move into this field of duality, we immerse so completely that a forgetting takes place. And with that forgetting, we allow love to also move into all manner of spaces, expressions, and experiences to allow us to rise back up to the surface of what love really is. For many, that can be a tumultuous road. It can be dipping and diving in swamps and deserts or riding high on the clouds. But as we move forward in our world, we're each being called to a higher expression of love. We're being called to rethink how we do everything and especially to understand that in most cases, for most of our lives, we might not have been loving, loved, or been loved. And it's because we've been thinking we are loving. You cannot think love. You have to slip into the heart. You have to deepen down into the body. But most people think they love, when actually, if you watch the words, the expressions, the actions, you will know if they are truly aligned in love, the full embodiment and expression, or if they are thinking love and yet acting unconsciously. It's a point to ponder today. Do I express experience and embody love, or do I simply think I am loving? Today I have a beautiful guest who truly understands not only what love has brought to her life and the embodiment and forward movement in the adventure and expression that is love. But she also has moved into great places of guiding the younger world, the spirits of our children, the families that are raising our children and our communities at large to understand the infinity of love, what it means to give and receive. And not just on occasion, not just when it seems special, or even when there appears to be a need, but giving 365 every single day. Imagine that. Jacqueline Way is passionately dedicated to serving humanity with love and compassion every day. Her sole purpose is to teach, inspire, and empower the hearts and minds of people globally to create a happier, more compassionate, and more peaceful world together. She expresses her purpose through her charitable organization, 365 Give, and her collaboration with Humanities Team. She's a world-renowned keynote speaker, philanthropist, author, and visionary leader. Jacqueline is committed to living the highest expression of who she is through her work, family, and by touching the lives of others 365 days a year. Without further ado, I want to welcome this beloved soul, Jacqueline Way, to 1111 Talk Radio. Welcome, Jacqueline. It is such a joy and a pleasure to have you here. Good morning, my sister. I'm so happy to be here with you. This is just the highlight of the year for me. Um, having time with you always just feels clearly like an expression of love. So thank you so much for having me today. Uh, it is it is a wonderful and inspiring story. You have a TEDx that you did a few years ago, and it was based on giving, where you were teaching your three-year-old son 
just a very simple vision. And I believe that the talk, the TED Talk, is called Change the World, One Give, One Day at a Time. Uh, Actually, it's called How to Be Happy Every Day. It will change the world. But it's based on that. I'd love for you to open up first with a bit of that story so that individuals understand that our giving really can be simple acts of kindness and love each and every day. Mm, Absolutely. You know, this story really began for me um, when my first son came home and I am an adoptive parent. And, you know, the moment you hold your child and, and for many of you that are out there right now that are parents, the moment you get to hold your child in your arms for your first time, I I always say to people, I'll never be able to truly describe that feeling, that feeling of unconditional love that I experienced for what I feel it was the first time in my life. You know, when you're an adoptive parent, you adopt a child literally sight unseen. You don't get to meet them and then decide. Uh, You just literally decide over the phone. And when you do that and then you go meet your child for the first time, you've already not only set an attention, but you've made a soul contract, an agreement with with a child that that you're going to unconditionally love them forever. And the moment I held my son Nick in my arms, there was a moment for me that changed the way that I looked at the world. And so when I was Nick, you know, came home and and I became a parent for the first time, I realized when I looked out at the world, the world felt like a bit of a scary place to me, you know, even now 16 years ago, Nick's now 16, you know, the world hasn't changed that much. It still felt like a lot of scary things were going on between climate change and the conflicts that continue to go on in our world, the hunger, the poverty. Uh, It all felt a little scary. And I thought if there was something I could do in this lifetime that could make a significant impact, it would be to grow a kind, compassionate, loving little man in our world. And before he started preschool, I thought I I knew uh, I needed to take the time in my own life to foster this in my son, to teach him this, to cultivate this culture of love and kindness in him. Because I know once they go to school, they're influenced by so many different factors. It's our opportunity uh, to really uh, build and foster these traits in our children before the age of five and even seven years old. So we set out on this journey and I decided that on his third birthday, we were going to do one thing to give back to the world every day for 365 days. But the whole concept of this was that it had to be so simple, a three-year-old could do it. And so we got started uh, right away on his third birthday. We sat down, we talked about the things that he cared about, the things that were important to him, even at the age of three. And, And one of those things that came up for him was being with animals and giving back to animals. And so that's where we started our journey, was uh, taking some blankets and towels down to our local animal shelter. And that first day was a profound impact on him. It didn't cost us anything. It cost us some time. It was on the way to the beach for us anyways, um, on one of our daily walks. But what he realized is that by just that one small gesture, he could see the immediate impact it was going to have. He could make that connection to the animals that he was going to impact. And as much as it didn't change his mind or change his world in that moment, he started to make the connection that giving does make us happy. Giving is this expression of love. And at the time, I started a blog around it because 16 years ago, that's what we did. This was, you know, when Facebook probably just came out. I wasn't even on Facebook at the time or Instagram didn't exist. And so we thought by sharing our stories through a daily blog, my simple hope was, is could we inspire just one more person? That was all it was, is could we inspire one person, friends or family, to also do one small act of giving? And so we started this journey and it was it was pretty remarkable. And we committed to 365 days of giving. And as much as it sounds like a lot, when you start to give, your intention literally sets you on a practice to look out into the world and find those simple ways to give every day. And that alone just changed the way that I looked at life. Is the way my son changed the way he looked at life. And there was no going back for me because I realized that giving really is love and action. Mm -hmm. Well, if that didn't leave the audience completely inspired and bring them back into their hearts and their bodies, I don't know what will. It's an extraordinary gift of generosity 
to the world, because I want to go back to the words you said, I wanted to cultivate a culture of loving kindness within my son. If we can cultivate love and generosity within the young hearts and minds that are here on the planet, then what kind of world would we then have? Mm -hmm. And it, it makes me feel like it's something that we each need to do for our own inner child first, because as we grow up and we become adults, because of the scary world, our fears, our stresses, uh, wanting to take care of our families and our children, it's easy to forget that it can be that simple, that loving and that pure. And it's just a beautiful example of how you did that. I want to talk a little bit about love, though. We titled this show, you gave me the title, Seven Seconds to Love. And in a world that has this entire polarity of love taking place right now, give me your definition of love. What are you talking about when you're using love in that statement, seven mm -hmm. seconds to love? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I'm, I'm just going to start off to say, I, I think we actually have love wrong. And I want everyone to understand that that growing up, I would call myself an addict to love. I did all the things that so many of us do. My story is not any different than anyone else's that I went looking for love in all the wrong places in my own life growing up. I was like many people, I think we can all look back at our childhood traumas and experiences and understand that maybe we weren't able to tap into the love that we are, or we didn't have an understanding of the love that we are. And so we go looking outside of ourselves to connect to that again. And that was me growing up was how do I, how do I find that love? How do I go searching for it? How do I get it from another? How do I get somebody else to fill me up when I felt so empty? And, and I had love all wrong growing up. And this experience with my son has really been so much what's changed my understanding about love. And so for me, if I were to define love, love is our true nature. Love is the expression of who we are when we remove all the other factors, when we get rid of the stresses, when we look out at the world and see the potential crisis, the devastation, the the everything that's not love, the hate, um, the fear, most of all, when we get rid of all of that, to me, all that's left in each of us is love. When we're born, that's what we are. We're just pure little bundles of love until the world shows us something different until we're taught something different, until somewhere along the line, you know, I'll give a little, couple of little examples. When I was born, my mother thought she was dying. And so there was a separation that instantly happened between my mom and I, and I actually didn't see her for days after I was born because um, she had gotten very sick from the epidural that they had given her. So there was this separation that happened between my mother and I when we were born. And after she took me home, my sister promptly picked me up out of the pram and dumped me on the floor. <laughs> so these were my first days and my experience in my childhood that I don't remember. You know, personally, I've been told these stories, but that leaves an imprint on you. And every other experience we have in our life begins to leave these imprints on you that at a cellular level, we remember or we experience and we have an emotional reaction from. So all of a sudden, we go from being this gorgeous little bundle of joy uh, that has come out and love to, oh, the world's saying it's hard. Oh, the world feels stressful. Oh, the world feels separated. And this is when we have to, in our lifetime, find our own journey back to the love that we are, rather than going and looking for it on the outside. It's how do we understand that we are love? How do we know and begin to connect to the love we are and know that when, when we look at self-love and we can say, I am love, that's what we give out. That's where we start. We start with I am love and it comes from us. It isn't, I'm going looking for love and I'm going to bring it in. It's how do we begin to understand we are love and we just 
pull it out of us into the world. And that's where I had it all wrong in my own life. And the seven seconds to love, this is how quickly we can use this beautiful body we've been given uh, and use it as our tool to turn love on from the inside out. It's the gift that we've all been given that we can literally flip a switch of love from the inside and give it out to the world. Mm. Beautiful. I want to go back to something that you said, because it is true. We've all had our own experiences, whether we remember them or not. But one of the things that comes from those experiences is a deep subtlety that oftentimes goes unnoticed. And it's that we can become takers rather than givers. Because when we were born, when we grew up in our homes, we didn't realize the different ways that those before us had become takers instead of givers. Mm -hmm. Yet that taking, that constant pulling from everyone else, it still results as a hunger for something that we just can't tap into. And you mm -hmm. use the word self-love. So it often does lead individuals back on that journey of self-love first. So when we talk about giving, especially 365 days, and we talk about love on the other side of the scale, there can be an imbalance that does start to take place where there's so much giving or giving for the sake of getting love. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the distinction there and how that shifts so that the giving is pure, unconditional, and not zapping of energy, and so that the love is also something that is not taking from the outside because we're giving so much. Well, one of the things I want everyone to understand, and a couple of things in this is, when, when we give, the way that giving, literally, when I say giving works best for us, and I'm going to explain that in just a minute, or how we can benefit the most from giving, is giving needs to be unconditional. When you give, even if it's buying somebody a coffee in line, or it's helping a coworker at work, or it's making a meal for your family, that when we give of ourselves, we need to give with no expectation of anything in return. Because if not, it's exactly what you said, Simran. If, if we start giving with some expectation, we're going to get something back from it, and that includes love in return, then we're starting to block the love in our life because we've put an expectation to love that if I'm going to give love, I expect it back. And that's never an exchange that works out and benefits us the most. But yet when we give love with no expectations of anything in return, then it's it's free. The, the love that we are giving is one that comes from the center of who we are. And then it becomes a practice. We, we're literally practicing that love in action. To me, it's why we've been giving these beautiful bodies that we can fully experience love when we just give it with no expectation of anything in return. And there's a beautiful thing that happens in our bodies. And I want everyone to just understand this. And I'm only going to talk about science for a little bit. But I think it's important, especially when we're talking about spiritual love, because we can't bypass our humanness. We can't forget that we're in human form. We can't negate that we're going to have um, reactions in our bodies that we can't always control. Stress is one of those things. When things come at us from the out outside world, stress is something that we all experience. It's a chemical reaction in our body. But so is love and happiness and joy and, and all of these beautiful emotions that make us feel good. And it's a way that we can use it as a guidance system. So when we give, this beautiful reaction happens in our body. I call it your daily dose of happiness. And it's a combination of dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and your endorphins. Well, dopamine is this reward system that we get. It's like crossing a finish line. You put your arms up in the air and, and you feel rewarded for what you've done automatically. Oxytocin, well, that's our love hormone. That's the warm hug that you feel. That's the first time you look at somebody and you feel love or when you look at your child. Serotonin is is our body's happiness transmitter. It makes us feel happiness. And our endorphins, um, you would have heard about this from the runner's high. 
It's that thing that keeps you going no matter what. So when we give all of this beautiful chemical reaction happens all at once in our bodies, which always is amazing to me to think about that every human being is born with this gift that when we give unconditionally, when we express love in a way that we just give it out with no expectation of anything in return, that this beautiful chemical reaction happens for all of us to make us literally feel at our best. And that's pretty amazing to me that that gift was given to each of us in this lifetime and the common thread that runs through every single human being. And we can begin to use these emotions as our guidance system in life to say, oh, I'm tapping into who I truly am. I'm getting all of the beautiful responses of happiness and love and joy, abundance of energy that connects us together uh, as a human race. It connects us emotionally. It connects us socially. And this is the magic to me that we can use as our guidance system back to our true self and our true nature, because that's love. That's where love really resides in all of us. And we can understand how we can turn the switch on in our bodies, both emotionally, mentally, physically from our heart, but most of all from our spirit. And that's the gift that's been given to us before we even came into this beautiful mortal coil, coil that we've all been given. So I wanted to just start with that so that people understand that it's not just uh, a spiritual, but it's a biological response that we get as an affirmation for love in our life. Mm -hmm. we, we are really intricate in our sacredness and the power that we can tap into within ourselves is unnameable. Mm -hmm. Because we we have this creative essence within us, but only when we tap back into who we truly are, what you were speaking about and, and what goes back to that giving, taking, bartering type of love and interaction that can oftentimes happen with people is a very codependent way of the world. And what you spoke of was infinitely independent. It was the overflow it was the waterfall that continuously outpours to create such beauty in our world. And that is what will create a more interdependent world. But we also live in this world where many of the lenses are tarnished, where people have gotten hardened by the heartbreak or the wounds that they have experienced. We have seen things taking place in our world not different than what has taken place throughout history, but to continuously see war or greed or all of these other things that take place in front of us, someone might be sitting there saying, well, yeah, love is what we are. Love can be everything, but it can't heal our world. Live in the real world. That's not true. So what would you say to someone who's battling this division within themselves about how to anchor and immerse themselves into the true love that they are, and yet continue to walk in a world that can oftentimes look like anything but love. Hmm. You know, one of the things I've been discussing a lot uh, over the last few weeks is something called human impact. And I think that we all need to understand, and especially right now in our digital world, our world of AI and technology that literally is in the palm of our each of our hands, is you know our lives are an expression of an algorithm that we create in our world and that algorithm is not separate from anyone else in this world in the big picture of things and this was a, a beautiful uh, podcast that i listened of michael singers this past week is it's like we're on this spaceship we're floating around on the spaceship out in the middle of the universe literally we call it planet earth but yet we're all sharing this, 8 billion people, more than that these days, are all sharing this one atmosphere that's fully connected. And we can't say, when I breathe in and I breathe out, my out-breath is going out into the atmosphere of this planet. And that alone is how we can begin to understand how we are all so connected. So my actions, what I do in this world, how I show up, is no longer an individual action, but because in the palm of my hand, I have a device, I have something called a phone, a smartphone. I have a smart computer. 
all of the other devices that we now use in our world, even you and I having this conversation, it's all listening, which is the interesting thing. It's all listening. And that scares some people. But the nice thing about everything listening to us now, and and I'm going to compare this to how the universe listens to us in a moment as well, is we create these algorithms. So if I opened my phone right now and I went into Google, I know that Google is actually listening to the conversation that you and I are having. So it's going to show me more of the words that you and I are sharing together. If I go into my algorithms on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, any other platforms that I use, anything else that I may use on my phone or my computer, it starts to show me everything I've been searching, everything I've been speaking about, um, all of the things that I bring into my life through this algorithm of technology that we use. I can go into any of my feeds and most people will laugh. You're not going to get any negative anything. You're not going to see news feeds. You're not going to see war. You're not going to see negativity. You're not going to see anything that I'm going to feed it that's going to give me something that's not going to do my best to make a positive human impact while I'm here. Because I know that everything we keep feeding into the algorithm of what we call technology right now feeds back to everyone else as well, right? We're feeding the system as we speak. And so I want everyone to consider their life like that as well. What if we are actually feeding into that bigger system, the universal system? And this is what we're seeing more and more when we're looking at the quantum fields. And this is now science. It's not just woo-woo. But when we're looking at the quantum fields of the world, everything we do in our own little life is feeding back into that world. So we're feeding what we're putting in, if we're sitting in fear, if we're sitting in worry, if we're sitting in stress, that's all getting fed back into this bigger field that we're all sharing, this one universal field as we spin around on this little tiny planet. And so we all have that choice that what do we want to feed into the system in our lifetime? Because right now we're feeding AI technology that everybody's worried about. If you're worried about AI, what are you feeding into that system? And if you're worried about how it affects the greater whole of the world, what are you feeding into that system? And how can we reflect back on that in our own lives? I want to make sure that in my lifetime, I'm feeding love into the system. I'm feeding happiness into the system. I'm not perfect at it every day. I don't always get it right. And I don't want anybody to think that. But what I know is I can continue to expand that in myself. I can continue to change that in myself. I can continue to look at things differently so that I'm feeding a system that I want to live in. I want to be in. I want my children to be in. I want my grandchildren to be in. And I want everyone else on this planet to share. What are you feeding to the system? What are you giving and receiving? We are love. It never left us, but we closed the door to it. Jacqueline Inwood Way says all you have to do is open the door. Take one step past the fear of what you don't know and say yes to yourself. Stop wiping left and say yes to love. Jacqueline Inwood Way started 365 Give as an independent parenting project with her three-year-old son. They made a commitment to give back to the world every single day. It had to be so simple that a three-year-old could do it. Today, 365 Give is a global giving movement called the 365 Give Challenge, a free educational program for schools inspiring and empowering children to give, a free online interactive membership program inclusive of businesses, families, clubs, and individuals, guiding and inspiring them to give every day. I hope you'll join April 25th for Do One Give Day. It's an annual event bringing people from all over the world together to do one small act of giving via social media, a simple yet powerful way to increase happiness around the world. Jacqueline leads a dedicated team of volunteers to create a ripple of giving around the globe every single day. You can find out more at 365give.ca and also be sure to follow her Humanities Team live show, which is called Mindset Heartset. Mindset Heartset Reset. We'll be right back with more of Jacqueline Way right after these messages.
Follow Voice America at Facebook.com forward slash Voice America for juicy updates from your favorite radio shows and podcasts. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today, www.1111mag.com. 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. Do you want more? More joy, more abundance, more power and presence? How would it feel to have more loving relationships? more empowered community, greater fulfillment, and life purpose? The 1111 Mastermind Community inspires, empowers, guides, and supports transformation. Shift your mind, expand your heart, deepen insights, let go and chart a new course, dream a new dream. The 1111 Mastermind Community is an online portal for personal transformation and soulful expansion. Go to courses.1111mag.com. That's courses.1111mag.com. Change begins with you. Let it be simple, convenient, and transformative. The time is now. Step through the 1111 gateway. Courses.1111mag.com. It's your world. Motivate. Change. Succeed. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. Simron is an award-winning author, publisher of 1111 Magazine, powerful speaker of wisdom, and a life mentor. Find out more at IamSimron.com. Now, back to 1111 Talk Radio. Before we get back to my extraordinary guest, Jacqueline Inwood Way with 365give.ca, I want to mention that I've just released something really beautiful and powerful. I'm so excited about it. I've been working on it for a long time, and it was very spirit-guided. I have created a virtual online retreat. It is called The Bridge from Humanity to Divinity, and it is an experience that you can immerse in over 11 days. You can spread it out over 11 weeks, 11 months, or do one piece every single day over the year and allow yourself to begin understanding how intertwined our humanity and divinity are and how we enter into the purest of love, kindness, and compassion when we immerse. I was guided to create a retreat experience for you so that you can start to learn how to pause how to love yourself, and how to be able to create retreat as an everyday life experience. When we do that, we offer greater love, kindness, and compassion to the world. So I invite you to go and explore, listen to me talk about it on the webpage, and find out if it resonates with you. Perhaps your life is asking for a retreat. It's called The Bridge, From Humanity to Divinity. 11 steps. You can do it, and it's right there waiting for you at IamSimran.com under the courses section. Jacqueline Inwoodway says that love has become a complex puzzle with thousands of pieces. We keep looking for the missing piece to complete us. We think we can find the perfect match in the eyes and arms of another. We expect them to mold and bend to fit perfectly to complete the puzzle, and yet feel disappointment and betrayed when they don't. In a world where there is instant gratification and the search for love is as simple as a swipe right, there is no quick way to say no to love. We find ourselves searching for love in all the wrong places. And yet, we are here, born complete, 
Along the way, we were always complete, and love has always been there. It is about now, the return to love, and understanding who we are amidst that. Jacqueline Inwood Way is the creator and dedicated world changer of 365give.ca. She also is one of the co-facilitators of the live show on Humanities Team titled Mindset, Heartset, Reset. And she is having an amazing event that's coming up that she wants to include everyone on April 25th, where you just do one small act of giving. It's called the Do One Give Day event. And it's an annual event bringing people from all over the world together to do one small act of giving via social media. It's a simple yet powerful way to increase happiness around the world. I invite you to find out more about her, everything that she's doing, and also search her TED Talk titled How to Be Happy Every Day. It will change the world. You will feel completely inspired. Jacqueline, welcome back. I want to go to the place of life, of everyday experience. And I think it's necessary to weave together the understanding that if we are loving, if we are giving, if we are creating greater kindness and compassion in the world, does that mean that we're not going to face challenges, that life's not going to get messy, that there won't be moments where we have to, like your live show is called, have a mindset, a heart set, and a reset? Well, I, I think this happens almost daily for most of us. I don't know about you, but, you know, I know the challenges uh, in my own life um, present themselves, and I'm going to say this, as an opportunity. And it's taken me a long time to get to that place where I can see every, what may look like a setback, a challenge, um, a place of fear, a place of frustration a place of expectation or disappointment, that I can look at these as my opportunity to expand more into my true nature, to expand the love that I know I am. And that takes practice. I'm not going to say that it's easy. You know, the journey that I've taken in my own life, I think we could all look at the journey that we've all taken and continue to take, that we need to practice and cultivate love so deeply in ourselves and knowing in ourselves that on our toughest days, our hardest days, our heartbreak days, our days filled with grief or sadness, uh, because it is going to happen to us all, that we know how to get back to that reset place. We know how to stand far enough back from the experiences that we're having to connect to the true heart of who we are so that we can give ourselves grace. We can give ourselves compassion. We can be loving enough to ourselves that what seems like the, the hardest times in our life, we will come out the other side of at some point. It's different for us all, but what I've come to realize in my own life is the places that I got the most stuck, the places that trigger me the most, that feel the hardest, that I can get through faster. I can get through the, the emotions of feeling stuck or sad or anger much faster than I used to now, and I can come back to that place of love um, my turn. I, I guess the only way to explain it is my turnaround time is a lot faster than it used to be. <laughs> and that practice of love for me is the benefit that it gives me. I know that I can't go out and change the world today. There's not one single person that can go out and solve all of our issues. But when we begin to cultivate this in ourselves, when we begin to cultivate compassion and love as a knowing and embodying a, a being in our own lives, that is our best opportunity to actually create change in our world. One of the biggest struggles in our world right now is the pandemic of mental health issues, of depression, anxiety, stress in our world. If we all started to take care of that for ourselves in our world, all of the other things, the war, the crisis, the hunger, the climate change, 
those would actually all start taking care of themselves because we're no longer coming from a place of fear and anger and anguish and shame, but we're coming from a place of love and compassion and generosity and kindness. It becomes who we are. So do I think that we can change everything right now? We can't, but we can one day at a time for ourselves by cultivating this in ourselves. I call that the path of the spiritual rebel in my mm -hmm. new trilogy of living, being, mm -hmm. and knowing. It is that part of ourselves that begins to understand that we each have that genius and it will unfold mm -hmm. if we let go of our strings of attachment to the world and focus back in on ourselves and our creative mm -hmm. genius. You had a profound experience this past summer that changed the way you looked at the world and you call it your eat, pray, love trip. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that and the power of yes. Absolutely. You know, I, I've been a mother for a long time. My oldest son is 16 years old. As I said, I've been married for almost 20 years now. And you talked about this a little bit earlier. And it's the giving of ourselves so much that we get lost in our giving. And I realized that for a good decade of my life, I got a little lost in my giving. As a mother, you give so unconditionally to your family. And I realized um, after a lot of pain um, over the past year that I have spent so long saying no to myself, saying no to my own life, because all I did was give to my family. And uh, I put them first. I put my children first. I put my dogs first. I put my husband first. And I realized at the very bottom of that pile was me. And through a decade of frustration and resentment and anger, that it was time for me to say yes to myself. And through, we can call them synchronicities, but Simran, you and I know there's no such thing as synchronicities, but through my practice with 365 Give, through opening my heart to the world, I say it happened this summer, but it's been an accumulation of many years of me practicing happiness, me practicing love, me beginning to understand what it all means on a deeper level that this summer an opportunity arose where the universe literally opened so many doors for me that all I had to do was step through and say yes. And for the first time in my life, I fully trusted and I stepped through that door of yes. And it took me on a trip to Portugal. And it was the first time I had been brave enough to go traveling on my own and say yes to everything that came with it. But before I left, the most important thing I did is I said yes to love. And so when I got on the plane, I, I started with a conversation with um, uh, one of the passengers and they said, you know, why are you going to Portugal? Is it for work or is it for uh, for personal? And I said, I'm going for love. And everywhere I looked and everywhere I went, I looked at this trip as an opportunity to look at life through the lens of love. I can't tell you the hearts that showed up literally everywhere. I have photo after photo of these pictures and impressions of love that came in every moment of my trip. People that I encountered, exchanges I had, whether it was through a glance, it was through a conversation, it was through one person giving me a bottle of wine at the fish market, but it just kept coming. And every time I recognized these interactions as a moment of love, and I would just say, thank you. And I would say, thank you. And I would greet it with an open heart. And every time I said yes to letting love into my experience on that trip was all I can explain it as, as a personal expansion. I felt like my heart grew. I felt like I didn't grow personally. I felt that I expanded through every core of my being. And in that, when I got back, Every door keeps opening up. Every opportunity that I get to say yes to, I keep saying yes. And I trust that every time I say yes, it is for my benefit. Now, 
I just want to make sure everybody knows that through this journey and when you take your own journey, your eat, pray, love journey, and if you haven't read that book, I encourage you to listen to it, watch it via a movie or read the book because you'll see your own story in it, um, whatever version that is. And saying yes to your life also means that you have to say yes to where you're stuck. You have to say yes to where it hurts. You have to you have to go back and clean up your house, as I like to call it. And I and I think I heard you um, in the interview that we've done with you on on mindset, hearts at reset. You use this powerful analogy. And if we think of our life as a house with lots of rooms, lots of closets beds that we have to get the dust out from under that when you say yes to your life it means you need to get right underneath the bed and clean out those cobwebs you need to go into every closet clean out all the stuff you no longer need and it can be painful and it hurts and a lot comes up but in that every time you look at it every time you see something that triggers you every time you see something that hurts and you look at it more closely with the lens of love and you hold that part of yourself that you never had the courage to hold on to and hold it tight and soothe yourself give yourself grace is your moment that you get to stand in more love and you understand that that is the truth of who you are. And you get to say yes again and again and again. And I know my journey to yes has only just begun for me. The fact that I'm here talking about love with you is just an affirmation for me that I'm I'm even able to do this. Probably a year ago, I might not have been able to do this conversation with you and speak with a full heart and speak about, for me, Seven seconds to love is the lens I put on in the morning. I have an affirmation that I use I'd like to share with everyone. And before my head even lifts the pillow every day, I embrace and embody love for myself. And I say, if love was a person, what would love think? What would love say? And how would love act? So that I've set the intention of love in my day. I've embodied love already before my feet even hit the floor. And it's my personal reminder that I am love and I get to express it in my world every day. That's powerful. And that's such a beautiful seven second ritual and experience and intention to hold each and every mm -hmm. day because it, it really is. If we look at the world with love, if we act and speak and think through the lens of love, then the only love can show back up for us. It kind of brings us back full circle to 365 Give. Mm -hmm. That is very much about giving in a simple act every single day outside. But when we create that loop of infinity and know that that also means to give every single day to the self on the inside, mm -hmm. then it empowers both. Truly powerful. Well, you know, and I'd love for people to look at this when we, you know, we talk about self-love and you and I have talked about this before. You know, for me, self-love isn't looking at the mirror and trying to convince myself my body is perfect today. I gave up on those self-love affirmations a long time ago. But if people looked at love that you're standing there as love and when I look at you, Simran, I see love. And so in that seeing, that self-love for myself, when I look out at the world and I look at a flower and I feel love, that's my affirmation of love and knowing I'm love. When I look out at the world and I see my children, I am love because when I look at them, I'm love. When I look at my cats, I am love. When I look at my garden, I am love. And so it's a, it's almost a, a different way of, of looking at self-love for ourselves that when we can embody love and when we look out, instead of going, oh, I'm looking out at the world, you know, people are now swiping. When I talk about seven seconds to love and they're swiping through apps looking for love, when you have an exchange of love with another person, that is self-love. You're saying to the world, I'm looking at you because I am love. And that is self-love and a different way that we can look at how we soothe ourselves and how we come to the world with love versus looking and trying to find love on the outside and bring it in. 
because that's never going to work for us. We have to stand in the truth that we know we are love. And when we're expressing it to another person, an animal, out into this beautiful planet that we're in, that is self-love because we're expressing ourselves as love, as the embodiment of love. Mm, how beautiful. And in receiving that overflow of love onto you, how has that shifted even your relationship with the things that you see going on in the world? I stand with less judgment. I st come from a place of understanding. I can understand why the world is the way it is right now. I can understand why people are coming into the world with so much anger and violence, not because I condone it, not because I agree with it, but I can understand why it's happening because we're in such a state of dysregulation. Each one of us, so many people out of 8 million people, millions, sorry, 8 billion people, millions and millions and millions are so dysregulated. They're so disconnected from themselves. We are so scared. And that fear shows up as anger. That fear shows up as discontentment. That fear shows up as as dis as as disconnecting from each other. And that's our greatest problem is that we've disconnected from each other. We've disconnected from ourselves. So when I look out into the world and go, there's millions of people suffering. It's not because I agree with it. It's not because I'm going to be the person that's going to inflict that, but I can understand because our whole world is so dysregulated. And we see that through our planet. Our planet is just feeding that back to us. We call it climate change, but Mama Guy is just showing us the dysregulation that we're all in. That's that loop. That's that quantum field that we're all in right now and feeding that system. And, and our earth is just, just telling us how dysregulated we are. It's showing us our dysregulation and how we're living. And that's why we each need to understand our own emotional intelligence, our emotional guidance system, our connection to ourselves and the bigger universal force so that we can get regulated within our own systems that regulates everyone around us and affects everyone around us. And that's what's going to start bringing us together with full connection to our planet, to the animals, to each other. That's the only way we're going to actually create some peace. But we all need to come from a place of not blame and shame and whose fault is this, but how can we understand just look at our leaders in this world. Look at where they've come from. Look at their own childhoods. Look who raised them. And all of a sudden, you can understand why our world the way it is the world it is. Look at your own life. Start there. Look at your own childhood. Look at what you were taught. What did your parents teach you? What did your parents' parents teach them? What did the parents that taught them, your great, great, great parent, grandparents? It's all just come through our lineage lines, and it's all what we've been taught. But the butt can stop right here. I have adopted children. And what I know is that I can change where they came from. I know I can change their DNA. I know they don't have to bring forward what was brought through them. And we can change it right here, right now for all of our DNA so that we start to change the next generation. And that's where it's going to start. Mm, changing everything by changing ourselves Thank you, Jacqueline, for being on 1111 Talk Radio. It has been a joy and a pleasure to be with my Piscean sister and to let you <laughs> Everyone share. needs to know this, right? We were born, <laughs> yes. we're, we, we share a birth date, which is exactly. absolutely incredible. The exact and, same, yes. You know, Simran, I, I need to encourage everyone, your new program, your retreat that's out, I am so excited about this. The gift that you give the world, how instantaneously you touched my heart the first time that we met in a broadcast we did together with Humanities team. I can't encourage people enough to not only go and use your books as a tool to guide you in your own life, but this new retreat. I am so excited. I can't wait to go hop onto your website now and, and sign up for this because this is something that it's exactly what I'm talking about. This is how we can care for ourselves. This is how we can foster this in ourselves so we can best serve everyone around us. And, and that's you, my sister. You are doing this for the world. And I am so remarkably, deeply grateful for you. 
Oh, I'm humbled and I am grateful for your words. Thank you. It has been a joy having you here. And I invite everyone to definitely get to know Jacqueline Inwood Way to tune in uh, to her sh- live show on Humanities Team, which is right after this one on Mindset, Heart Set, Reset, and to go to 365give.ca to find out all that's going on there. Be a part of the Do One Give Day event. Just do one small act of giving on April 25th. One small act on social media. It's a simple and powerful way to increase happiness around the world. And definitely check out her TED Talk. Listen to this episode again. Let your heart be open. Go check out my retreat and let's all open our hearts together. Until next week, in love, of love, with love, and as love. I am Simran. Be well. Thank you for opening your mind to a new reality, your heart to greater compassion, and your experience of aliveness with 1111 Talk Radio. Join host Simron next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time to step through the gateway of conscious living here on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Remember, you are not on the journey. You are the journey.